Are SQL injection attacks real? Absolutely yes. Now, there are two main things we'd want to do to protect against that. Number one is have securely written applications. So that when a user types something in a user field, the application is checking to see whether or not it looks like SQL commands. And if so, boom, doesn't allow it to be processed by the back end. So that's the first step into dealing with SQL injections. But the second thing we can do also is we can put a device like a firewall between the user or the potential hacker and the actual web server and have that firewall investigate and look at the traffic flows. And if it sees what it thinks is a SQL injection attack, the firewall can boom, stop it right there. And all the major next generation firewalls have the ability to do this type of SQL injection analysis and stopping at the firewall. And in this video, I'd like to walk you through how to do that and verify that on the Palo Alto firewall. And for this demonstration, we're going to use Firewall 19. It has a basic configuration in place, including an initial security policy. It also has SSL decryption in place so that traffic from a user like right here going out to the Internet, the firewall is using SSL forward proxy and it's able to decrypt and analyze even the HTTPS sessions between the client and the servers out on the Internet. So with all this in place, we're going to add on top of this in a Palo Alto world what they refer to as vulnerability protection, which as one of many things it can do, it can look for and prevent a SQL injection attack from being forwarded through the firewall. And as far as the basic setup of the firewall with all these steps, please check out the playlist right here on YouTube, which is all about getting a Palo Alto firewall from zero to 60 in a very short period of time. So we're gonna be starting with that basic config and then adding onto it the vulnerability protection. And it'll be super fun if we can do a comparison of before versus after with the vulnerability protection. And to do that before we implement vulnerability protection on the firewall, let's go ahead and attempt from a client to go out to a server and actually try a SQL injection attack. So let me bring in a Windows client. So this represents this little Windows client right here on the network. So its IP address is 10.10.0.52. Its default gateway is the firewall. And we're going to go ahead and go out to the Internet. So we'll open up a browser. And let's go out to a test site purposely set up for testing and working with SQL injection. And that's this website URL called demo.testfire.net is provided by IBM. And also for a fantastic video regarding how to carve out and create SQL injection attacks, please check out Network Chuck's video on that exact topic. And I'll put a link for that below in the description as well. So for the purposes of this video, I want to walk through how we can prevent a SQL injection attack rather than how we can create one. So here at demo.testfire.net, which is a demo site only, we'll go ahead and click online banking login. And instead of putting in a username and password, what I'm going to use is this string of text right here. And again, for more details on that, check out Network Checks video. It's fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and take this SQL command. I'll just copy it to my buffer. Then I'll go back to the website, right click, and I'll paste it in here. I'm also going to paste in that same exact string for the password. So the username and the password are both this string of text which is going to trick the website into authenticating and logging us in. So we'll go ahead and click on login. And my browser is saying, whoa, that password you just used was found in a data breach. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. So I'm going to tell my browser to not remember that. And we are logged in as admin. So the firewall with this default configuration hasn't been trained to implement vulnerability protection until we tell it to do so. So let me go ahead and close that browser. And let's go to the Palo Alto firewall that has all these pieces already in place. And let's add on top of it vulnerability protection. So this is firewall 19, the firewall that's currently in use that our client's going through. And to implement vulnerability protection, we're going to do two basic things. Number one, we're going to verify that we have a vulnerability protection profile to use. And then secondly, we'll include that as part of our security policy. So to see our vulnerability protection profiles, we'll click on objects. And on the left, we have a section for security profiles. And then there's a subsection here called vulnerability protection. And it has two protection profiles that come with the system. We can go ahead and clone these or use these, or we can make our own. So I'm going to click on add and let's make our own. And let's name it our VP profile. And as far as what we want this profile to do, if it's ever matched upon, we want to click on add and let's call this reset critical high and medium. So that's a little bit extreme because we may not want to really do a reset, but for the demo, I'm going to go ahead and say, if there's any signature matches, that are in the severity of critical, high, or medium, we want to go ahead and do a reset. Now, to train it to do that, we're going to specify the action here, not as default, which is the default for each of the signatures, which may vary. But what we want to do is do a reset both. I want to reset the client. I want to reset the server. If anything in the severity of critical, medium, or high is seen as far as signature matches for vulnerability. Also, while we're at it, I'm going to do a packet capture. So let's go ahead and do an extended capture. And for the category, I'll go ahead and say any. 
And then as far as the action of reset, both the client and the server, I want that to happen just for critical, high, or medium severity signature matches. So there's the title we gave it, and there's the actual severities we're looking for. And we'll click on OK. Also, if we're having false positives where we're having an action take place and it's not really malicious traffic, or at least in our environment it's not, we can also set up exceptions. So we click here on Exceptions, click on Show All Signatures. Currently, there's over 18,000 of them. And let's go ahead and do a search for SQL. Press Enter. And now there's 796. Let's go ahead and do SQL Injection. Press Enter. And right there, we have HTTP SQL Injection Attempt. So this is the one right here we're going to be matching on in just a moment. So the severity level there is medium. And in our profile, we said if it's medium, high, or critical, we want to do a reset as opposed to the default action here, which is just alert. If they wanted to remove that from the list, we could make an exception and say we don't want to match on the signature. So I'm going to leave all the signatures in place, go back to our rules just to confirm that we are going to do a reset for severity critical, high, or medium. And then we'll click on OK. So now that we have this vulnerability protection profile, we want to include that as part, like an add-on to our security policy rule. So we'll go to policies on the top, on the left. We'll make sure security is selected. Here is our current one and only custom security rule called inside to outside. We'll select that. And on the actions tab here for the profile settings, instead of just having none, we'll say we want to use profiles and we want to use the vulnerability protection profile that we just made. And that's how we associate this vulnerability protection profile with this security policy rule. So click on OK. So we'll click on OK. And then we'll go ahead and commit our changes by clicking on Commit. And we want to preview our changes. We can go ahead and click right here on Preview and click OK. So the parts in green here are the parts that we're adding. So we're adding a new profile called our underscore VP underscore profile. If the severity is critical, high, or medium, that looks all great. So I'll close that preview window and we'll click on Commit. And while that commit's in process, let me remind you about the hardware that we're using as part of this demo. So here is the little PA440 that we're using. And here is the switch that's providing the access to the appropriate VLANs. So I was using a Cisco switch, which is a little bit louder. And so I moved to this little one, which is fanless as well, and takes a little less power. All right, so that commit is just finishing up here on Firewall 19. So let's head back to the computer and we'll test our results. All right, that commit is done. We'll close that window. And before we do the test, let's also take a look at our logs. So we'll go to monitor and on the left we have traffic logs. And let's go down to threat logs. And currently there's no threat logs, but that's about to change. So I'm going to change this update to every 10 seconds and let's bring back in our client. So once again, here is our client. We'll open up a browser. We'll go to that test banking website one more time. We can either click sign in here or online banking login here. Either way is great. And then we'll go back to my text document here. I'm just going to copy and paste once again, this string of text, which is single quote space or space single quote one single quote equals single quote one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my buffer. So it's copied to my buffer on this computer. We'll go back to the website and I'll paste that in as the username and I'll paste it in also as the password. And the message here says the connection was reset and the person who reset it was the firewall. In the background, there's our log. So the firewall was in the middle of that traffic flow. It had SSL decryption in place so it could see the actual payload and it could see that weird string that it thought was a SQL injection attempt, which it was. It correctly identified it and it stopped the traffic. So if we click on the details for one of these log entries. Here's showing the action of reset both. There's the security policy rule that it matched on, which had the vulnerability protection profile associated with it. And for the details here, it shows the vulnerability HTTP SQL injection attempt. And then we can view more information on it in the Threat Vault at Palo Alto. So by having decryption services in place first, which is critical, so the firewall can see what's going on at the application layer, and now adding on top of that a vulnerability protection profile, we can indeed add an additional layer of defense, including protection against SQL injection attacks right at the firewall. To add on the vulnerability protection as we just did to the firewall, it requires some basic fundamental configuration first on the firewall. So if you haven't checked out those videos in the 0 to 60 playlist, check those out as well to get up and running with the Palo Alto firewall as fast as possible. So if this video has been valuable to you or you don't want to miss any of my new content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you, my friend, in another video soon.